So here's the question. Why would you own a purple suit? Here's another question. Why wouldn't you? Let me tell you guys a couple things about purple. So let's say you're a successful guy. Check. And let's say you have a, how many suits do you have? 30. That means a lot. Yeah. You got a lot 40, of suits. I don't okay. know. You're going to get there, guys. You're going to get to a point where you have a lot of suits and you want to expand your wardrobe. And I'm sure a lot of them are blue and gray and that's fine. Purple is a very uh, utilitarian addition to your wardrobe because purple can be worn like a blue. So you will wear purple. It takes a bit of courage. It takes a, it takes a bit of courage. Well, you know, showing courage brings courage. Yes. So why not? In fact, the only thing I would say about a purple suit, I'm going to get into this a little bit technically, but don't wear it with a white shirt because technically it's an earth tone. So you want to wear purple with an off-white. We have a little bit of an mm -hmm. aubergine or like an off-white, like a, a pink hue, so beautiful for purple. But there are several amazing advantages to a purple suit. Number one, the jacket of a purple suit works in a casual setting with different materials for pants. So, for example, your purple jacket or your purple suit is likely going to be wool. Uh, but the purple jacket also works with a trouser made from corduroy, which is more difficult with a navy jacket because navy is too formal for corduroy, but purple is not. So you can wear it with a corduroy pant. You can wear it with a chino. You can wear it with a jean. And it'll look good and fit the situation. But there's more. There, there's something else about purple is that it's a bold color. And it takes courage. It takes gregariousness. It takes some ostentatious thinking to wear purple. Yes. And guys, here's what I tell my salespeople all the time. Get out of your comfort zone. Sometimes as a salesperson, you don't want to draw attention to yourself. And I say, go do it. Get out of your comfort zone and put yourself into situations where you think someone might laugh at you. And that's okay, because are you going to embarrass yourself in sales? Every day. Are you going to fail in sales? Every day. Should you be comfortable with failure and a little bit of embarrassment? Every day. Every so there's nothing wrong with wearing a purple suit and standing out and sending a message to the world. Like, hey, man, I'm here, and I'm taking up your focal you know, sight lines. I'm going to draw those attentions to myself. I'm going to be the king of my environment. And purple is also a royal color. Purple emboldens you to think bigger, to think more royally. Purple is the color of luxury. It is the color of kings. So there's a lot of advantages in having a purple outfit. I have, oh, maybe five or six purple suits and my wife can't get me to stop wearing them. But you might want to consider one if you don't have one yet. Now, let's turn this into a conversation about, well, first of all, tell us about the suit. Well, one of my idols, one of the entrepreneurs that I admire is Mr. Jim, Jimmy Patterson. Mm. And he wears a purple suit all the time. So I thought to myself, well, you know, to look up to my hero, well, would, would it be great because I don't have one purple suit. So I was talking to Dimitri and said, hey, wouldn't it be great if I could have one and just to see, kind of take a little bit of a risk, mm. right? And how that would look. So it turns out great. You know, one thing I love about Jim Patterson is that he's in the car business. He owns car dealerships. And you would think this. And he's a salesman. Right. Yeah. Right. And you would think, well, this is a car salesman suit. And he wears it everywhere. He's a billionaire. And he doesn't care. He's like, yeah, I'm a car salesman. He embraces his character. And that's something for me when somebody asks me, like, what do you do for a living? You know, I don't say I'm a tailor first. I'm a salesman. Like, well, you, you're you a CEO of a company. No, I'm a salesman. I'm a salesman first. And I, and I embrace that. And Patterson, who actually spoke at my business school back when I was in university, and I have some really cool stories about that. He wears these sort of car salesman outfits. And I love it because he's telling his car salespeople that I'm one of you. I started just like you started. I'm doing just what you're doing. And he's embraced that character. And Dan, you've embraced the sales character pretty, pretty face on. You just, you're a salesman. Yes. Well, it kind of like my brand equals, you know, high ticket closing. Yeah. Right. Uh, and not just embrace, I think sales got me to where I am today. Without my closing skill, I wouldn't be who I am today. And it's also the skill that got me to being known around the world, hmm. my ability to sell. You think about it, unlike the other celebrities that you have, <laughs> right? where what I do with how I accomplish my, my you could say, quote, unquote, fame, is through my ability to sell. Yeah. Through the camera, yeah. communicate my message, share my story, share my lessons, to build that falling one at a time. What is it? It's the ability to sell. Well, sales is an art and a battle. Like I think about when you talk about our other influencer and celebrities. So the first one's Lennox Lewis. He got to the top of the world and got to be where he's at by punching people in the face and getting punched. Yes. I'm not cool with that. Like I love him and I love boxing, but I'm just not cut out for that. Let's get real. Uh, and then we got Alice Cooper and he's famous for singing ability. Yeah, music. 
Well, my children like literally yell when I'm singing to get me to stop. So I know that's not where I'm meant to do. Uh -huh. But when I discovered sales, I'm like, wait, I get to perform and I get to go to battle without sacrificing myself physically like a boxer. Yes. And, and all I have to do, all I have to do is this one thing called sales that not only helps me make money, but it makes me better at life. Like who doesn't want to be more influential in life? Doesn't that a skill everywhere you go? Who doesn't want to be more persuasive? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And who doesn't want to make more money? And, and sales is also about discipline. Who doesn't want to be more disciplined? That's a skill. That's a character developing skill. It's very powerful. So um, one more thing about this outfit I want to ask you, Dan. So let's talk about boldness with salespeople. Do you train your salespeople to be more bold, to be more risk optimizing, to take more risks? Talk about that a little bit. Well, this is taking a risk, right? Yeah. Trying a, a purple suit. But I think closing in sales Closing is not something you do to a prospect. It's something you do for a prospect. Right, yes. That sometimes the prospect doesn't know that, hey, I would benefit from this product. I didn't know I could wear a purple suit. Yeah. But I took a little bit of risk and through our communication. And then you, as, as a client, right, you gave me the comfort and assurance and say, hey, it's going to look fine. Yeah. It's going to be fine. Well, mm. I don't know. It's going to be fine, yeah. right? It's something you do for me, yeah. right? Not to me. So it's not something, oh, we do it to somebody. We twist their arm to buy something. It's never the case. Yeah. Right? Closing is simply helping people to make a decisions. What well, they already want to make. They already want to make. make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Same thing. Yeah. You're helping me to make decisions. I, I've been thinking about it. I sure. kind of want to make, but sure. just give me the little nudge. Let's do it. People are afraid of the next step. One thing I tell my salespeople, number one, speak louder on the phone. Take up space. Be more bold. Ask that girl out. You want to ask her out? Just damn do it. Fail. It's okay. Fail. You will die. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. I teach my salespeople, learn to fail harder. Uh, if you wear something bolder. So one of the things that Grant Cardone does that I really like is he talks about how if people aren't complaining that your salespeople are too aggressive, that means they're not aggressive enough. Uh, and I say it's a line and it's a difficult line to walk because you can be too timid or too aggressive. And I say, risk can be aggressive. Because if you're too timid, you won't fail enough to learn. Yeah. But if you're too aggressive, you'll get feedback and people will get you a little pushback. And that's a corrective action you want to take. So I appreciate that you're wearing a purple suit. It's a salesman suit. I'm a salesman. You're a salesman. And, and you're, you're a salesman. salesman. Um, I have a, a question for you. So, Dan, based on what we've discussed a little bit today, which is some philosophy of sales and fundamental of sales, obviously you're really, really good at selling. And, and you have some very nuanced approaches to looking at different situations in sales. Now, you hire salespeople in your organization. All the time. Come hiring right now. I'm hiring right now. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys why you should work for Dan's company. And hopefully Dan will tell you guys why they might consider working for our company. Let me tell you guys why you want to consider working for Dan's company. You need a mentor. Like you need somebody sales is not something you learn from a book. And it's really, really important that you can see somebody in action because there's so much nuance. Like imagine that you got to learn how to shoot a three pointer from Steph Curry. Would that not be to your benefit? Like, why not learn from somebody that's in the sphere of teaching you and people like you how to learn? That's an opportunity for you to grow. Uh, I learned my sales from door-to-door -door sales, and I followed some great door-to-door -door salespeople. I was fortunate to have mentors that corrected me because sales isn't always logical. No. There are, there are social status cues you have to learn. You have to watch a professional and a master do it. So there's an opportunity for you. Uh, and additionally, your salespeople recruit other salespeople to learn how to sell. You're doing the world a favor because you are teaching people how to sell, which is an important and fundamentally necessary skill to survive in the world. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I always say, who, who am I looking for? I'm looking for PhD. Not the PhD you're thinking about. Yeah. Poor, hungry, and driven. I like that. Right? Yeah. Young guys, young girls, they, they want to grow, right? They, like they, they come from, they don't come from money. They need to make it. They have to make it. They are driven. They're coachable. That's who I want because I can give them everything else. Yeah. I could give them the skills. I could give them the training, which I have a lot, right? I, all, the, all the mentorship, I can give them all that. Yeah. They got to come with the hunger. Mm. They have that, then everything is okay. Because I wasn't a good salesperson. I was horrible. <laughs> I was horrible yeah. as a salesperson. But I learned the skills over the years because I was poor, hungry, and driven. Amazing. Uh, now, Dan, let me ask you a question. Why might somebody consider coming to sell high-end luxury clothing at LGFG Fashion House? Well, it's easy. First of all, you surround yourself with like-minded people, right? And you learn how to look good and, and feel good. And you got to network 
with other successful people because the clientele that yes. you have. Yeah. And you get to see how they operate. Otherwise, chances are you will never even be be able to connect with some of these people. I think that's it by itself. And you're an amazing salesperson. Thank you. So you train them well. I mean, that's that's amazing. One of my, my very first sales meeting uh, selling high-end clothing, I remember it was in Vancouver. It was actually the Ventel building. Mm, yes. And I met with a senior partner at a very prominent law firm. It was, the guy's name was Howard. This was about 12 years ago. And I called him and I show up to his office. And uh, I remember on the phone call, I said, how much do you spend on your suits? And he goes, how much do your suits cost? And I go, what do you like? I don't want to answer the question. What do you like? He goes, I will never buy a suit from a company that sells anything for less than 3000 I'm like, boom, I have a high ticket guy. I go in to meet him. First thing he says, he looks at me. He goes, oh, you're very young. He's trying to take power over me. And I, and I, but I knew what was going on. So I look back at him and I say, would you rather buy from an old lazy tailor or a young hustler like me? And he goes, all right, sit down. So he buys. And as he's buying, he points to the window behind them. We're over, overlooking like Cole Harbor. And he shows me that's my airplane there. I live on the island. I fly my own seaplane to work every day. That was my first meeting ever. I was 25 years old. And I thought, man, I want to work with people that fly their own plane to work every day. Maybe one day I'll get to fly my plane to work every day. So being around highly, I've, you know, I've now dealt with influencers, celebrities, rock stars, movie stars, lots of top people, CEOs, being around those people has made me better. Yes. What an opportunity for young people. Like how many opportunities today exist for people to ascend that social hierarchy? Sales is the way to do it. Yeah, sales is the way to do it. And in this way, like luxury suits and not just cheap suits, luxury, luxury suits, yeah. right? Think about if you, you could, you could, you could work at McDonald's. You can work at Walmart. Chances are you're not going to meet the people that you want. No. Right? And you never know how, and this may not be the final career. It of course. It could be a stepping stone. Of course. For a few years. And, but then later on, when you've developed the network, you don't know what what doors would open up. That's the key. And I'll, I'll, I want to say one small thing here that's really important. That I talk to the new salespeople in our organization all the time. You could work at McDonald's and you probably won't fail. And that's a problem. Because today, young people, they can avoid all environments where they can fail. Like flipping burgers has a 0% failure rate. Is there a chance you'll fail at sales? <laughs> the big chance. First 30 days. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to be in an environment where you can fail and know that it's okay to fail. We've learned how to give trophies for participation. We've learned how to validate you because you're special. But we haven't learned to confront reality. And sales is reality. Like when you go out there... With your sales pick case, up that phone. you know the reality, right? Yeah. Every yeah. time, every time pick up the phone. And just because you're good this month, doesn't mean you're good next month. You got to bring your A game all the time. And if you fail enough, you might get a chance to wear a bespoke wardrobe with a jade suit and a purple suit or a $100,000 watch, drive a white, I think we both drive a white Porsche, which is very cool. That's okay, guys. Listen, not, nothing shy about it. You've earned it, man. Yes. You've earned it. You fought for it. And you're giving other young people an opportunity to do the same. Yeah. And I started with nothing. Same. So let's imagine that you have a, a beautiful house and a, and a beautiful wardrobe and a moth, a nasty moth gets into your closet and leaves a hole in your suit. What should you do? Well, some people would say you can mend it. And for $300, you can mend the fabric. It won't look as good. I have bad news for you. And I have good news. The bad news is if you have a moth hole, probably in your pants, that those pants have to go to the trash. But the good news is you can get two pair of pants of your bespoke suit, or you can get a very special hanger from LGFG Fashion House, which doesn't attract moths. The moths are not attracted to the suit. They're attracted to the wood on your hanger. So get the right hanger, LGFG Fashion House, and you won't get moths and you won't get holes in your pants, except from all the money in your pocket that's burned a hole. That's, that's, that's going to happen. I love that.